Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to do a video today on how to research a livery button. So we will take a button and we will research it. Uh, we will try to find out a little bit about the button, where it came from, who made it. Uh, we'll look at um, what family it was for, what house it who came from, that kind of thing. Um, we're going to use three main resources today. First one is going to be a spreadsheet. Got this spreadsheet from the UK Detector Finds database. They are a research and archive based forum on uh, the internet for metal detectorists. The guys that go out with metal detector equipment looking for metal stuff in fields. These guys have found gold, they've found all sorts of stuff, but they find a lot of livery buttons. Um, so they've done and compiled a lot of resources based on the being able to date the buttons, which is completely invaluable. So if you guys are watching this, hey, I really appreciate y'all's work. I really appreciate y'all's website. Vast resource for someone like me. We're also going to use Fairbairn's Book of Crests. This is volume one. This is going to be all the text. We will also use volume two. This one's going to be all the pretty pictures. And then we will use Debrett's Peerage. All of these very heavy books, very old books. Uh, the important thing to note is you do not need to go buy a bunch of books. If you're get, just getting into this hobby, it's not something you need to do. You can find all of this information on Google. Um, if you're only researching a handful of buttons, there's absolutely no reason for you to go spend money on a book. Um, all of these books are available online, usually from Google, but from a few other places. Um, the internet resources are also usually searchable by, you know, different words. Excellent resources on the internet. I will post some links below for some information. And we will take a button, research it, figure out what kind of information we can find about it. Do a really basic primer on you know how to do this, how to go about it. Um, this one's going to be fairly simple, but you can at least kind of grasp the different steps that we need to go through. After that, we'll end the video. So, thank you for coming, and let's get to work. Okay, so this is the button we're going to look at today. It's a lion with a coronet of rank, sitting on a hat. First thing we're going to want to do is turn it over. We need to figure out who made it. So we have Furman and Sons Limited, 108 St. Martin's Lane, London. The verbiage on the back of the button is what's important to date the button. So let's go ahead and date the button first, and then we'll look at the crest. Itself. So here's my little notebook. We're going to turn to Furman. D. All right, Furman starts here. Furman is by far the most common maker. So we are looking for Furman and Sons Limited. Come on, focus. We are looking for Furman and Sons Limited, 108 St. Martin's Lane, London. So Furman started way back in 1677. Hopefully you can read that. If not, I will zoom in. We have one important thing to know is that in 1875, Furman became a limited liability company. So any button that says Furman and Sons or Furman Limited or anything like that, LD or LTD, it's going to be after 1875. So if you look, we have Furman and Sons Limited, 108 St. Martin's Lane, London. Okay. Lots of information. So our button is going to fall. There's a lot of duplications here. So we're going to look at right here, this one, 1895 to 1915. Furman and Sons Limited, 
108 St. Martin's Lane, London has to say exactly what the button says because there's lots of different variations. So you're looking 1895 to 1915. So as far as livery buttons concerned, this is more of a modern button. I mean, this button is right at 101 years old at, the, at its youngest. So um, it could be 125 years old, but it is at least 101 years old as of this video being made. So let's look at the crest itself. So this is Fairbairn's Book of Crests. This book is divided by subject matter for the most part. You will have lions up front. You'll move into different animals. You'll move into birds. You'll go into shapes, globes, people, hands, gauntlets, all the way through. Now, once you get to the back, you're going to have the addendum section. So if you're looking for a particular lion and you can't find it in the front, you have to page one by one through the back because you know, here's a dragon. Dragons were earlier in the book. Here's a lion. Lions are in the very front of the book. But all of these are more modern crests, I guess, and they were added later. So if at first you don't succeed, go to the back of the book and look. So we are looking for a particular lion. So let's go to the front where the lions are. And we are going to find our lion. So they're usually by attitude. So you got, you know, rampant, and we move on. All right. Is it this page? I'm getting close. We got Is that it? Remember, we're just looking at the crest. We're not looking at the coronet yet. Maybe that one. We really have two possibilities here. So if you look very closely at this particular crest, you can have the line in the right attitude, but then you look at the tail. Okay, so if you notice in this crest, the tail is sticking out. In our crest, number seven, it's curled. And the paws in a certain position. You have to balance heraldry with two facts. So first, that at its basic form, heraldry is a science of words. It's a specific set of words and rules that allow for a picture to be trans translated across borders and across languages. So you have the artist representation of individual crests. So it's going to differ slightly from your button. However, this button is closest to this crest in this book. The only difference we have is the tail. So when we look at the listing for plate four, crest seven, we're going to be looking for an asterisk. What that's going to do is, is it's going to be this crest, but it's going to be slightly different. So they put the asterisk in there to note some sort of difference from the actual engraving in the book. So you got plate number four, and then it's crest number seven. So let me get that closer. So we're going to be looking at crest number seven on plate four. Okay. Here's volume one. So at the very back of the book, you're going to find, you can search by motto, which is helpful on certain buttons. You're going to go to the very back to the key to the plates. 
we're going to go to plate number four. Plate number four. And so we have plate four, listing seven. Again, we're looking for that asterisk. So we have a possibility of diable or dibble, another spelling of dibble. Healy is out because Healy is that exact crest. So ours is a little different, so we're not going to look at Healy. We can look at Hemming, Hemming spelled differently, Howard, Ravencroft, and Wicklow. We're really going to have to look at each one of those and decide which one fits our description of our button. Which one is going to have that same crest but with the tail straightened. Let me show you that. Play number four. Number seven, right there. So you look up all those and you go to, let's go this way. We're going to look for Howard, H O W A R D. Now, if you look, we're going to have the names and then we're going to have the key. So, like this Howard is 4.4. Plate, uh, plate four, crest four. So it kind of gives us a key to look. So in the case of this particular crest, we've identified a list of families. So what we're going to look at now is now we will look at this coronet of rank. This coronet of rank is that of a duke. So there's not very many dukes out there. If it was an earl, a baronet, it would be more difficult. But this is a ducal coronet. So we know we're looking for a duke. So if we look through all those family names and um, don't find any dukes, then we're lost. So we look through all of them. So if we look right here, we will find Howard, which is one of the names on our list, Duke of Norfolk. So we t it says, see Norfolk. Okay. So let's go look at Norfolk. Right here it says Norfolk, Duke of, so Duke of Norfolk, Earl Marshal and Hereditary Marshal of England. Very, very famous man. This one, so the family name is Fitz Ellen Howard from Arundel Castle in Sussex. Uh, my own family comes from Sussex, they are not the Howards. Um, issuant from a ducal coronet, or, which means gold, a pair of wings, ghouls, each charge with a bend between six cross, cross of 50 yards. Not the one we're looking for. Two, on a chapeau, ghouls, turned up ermine. That's the little hat at the bottom of the crest. A lion statin with tail extended, gorged with a ducal coronet. Gorge basically means around its neck. That's the one we're looking for. Okay, so we've identified the family crest, which is Howard. Fitz Allen Howard. We've identified the Duke, so it's Duke Fitz Allen Howard, Duke of Norfolk, and we have a time period of 1895 to 1915. I just happen to have a 1915 copy of Debrett's Peerage, so let's get into that. So here we have Debrett's Peerage, Baronage, and Knightage. It's 1915, which is right in the range we need to be right at the end. So we're going to open it up to the Duke of Norfolk's page. So on this page, there's going to be a wealth of information. You're going to have this particular one is for Henry Fitzalan Howard, 15th Duke, Premier Duke and Earl, his birthday, all of his various titles, positions. You're going to have a description of the arms, which is the coat of arms here, supporters, motto. You can have the three crests and the description thereof. What we need to look at is when Henry Fitzalan Howard became Duke of Norfolk. So we're going to look at predecessors, which is here. The Dukes of Norfolk have a very large page in the Bretts. So we look at the very, very end. We see that 
Henry Granville, the 14th Duke, was born in 1815. He was a Minister of Parliament for Limerick, 1851 to 1852. Um, marriage, given the royal license for additional surname Fitzalan, and he died in 1860, which means that he was succeeded by his son, Henry, the 15th Duke, present peer, Earl of Arundel, Earl of Surrey, Earl of Norfolk, Baron Maltravers, Baron Fitzalan, all, these, all the different titles. So we know that because of our date range, that if the 14th Earl died in 1860, our book is, is 1915, the 15th Duke is still alive as of the printing of this book. So we know that we're correct because we've dated the button to 1895 to 1915. So we know that this button was used in the household of the 15th Duke of Norfolk. If you look here, again, I don't know how much of this you can see in the camera, but you're going to have the seats of the of the family every listing will have this it won't be quite this long but you'll have so this one says seats arendelle castle sussex beach hill sheffield derwent hall derbyshire car harvey new abbey dumfrieshire and then you have a town residence norfolk house st james square southwest and then the clubs they were a part of so you know that this button was used at one of these houses it was almost certainly used at the county at the at the seat of the family at Arundel Castle. Um, the reason I say that is because of the ducal coronet. It was in the presence of the duke. The duke stayed at Arundel Castle. So we've learned quite a lot so about to this review, button. We have taken a single button, looked at the back, dated it, found out who it was made by and where. We have looked at the crest. And then we've looked at the coronet of rank, if there is one, and we found who the button belonged to. Then we turned to Brett's and found out a whole wealth of information about the family, dated the button to the 15th Duke of Norfolk, Henry Fitz Allen Howard, found out where he lived, and we now know just about all there is to possibly know about this particular button. We will never know who actually wore the button. Um, it could have been any of his servants. Um, I'm sure the Howard family has information on who, who worked at their various houses, but there, there's just no way to know at this point. But we do know that the button was used in service to the 15th Duke of Norfolk. And um, that's about as far as you can go with it. So, okay, so really quickly, we have looked on Wikipedia and found a picture of the 15th Duke of Norfolk. Here's the gentleman. Then we have the coat of arms of the Duke of Norfolk. This up here in the middle is the particular crest we were looking at. And then we were able to find a beautiful picture of Arundel Castle and that adds a little bit of more of a picture to what we have. So that was my video on how to research a livery button. I realized it was a very basic primer but you kind of have to get started in this research in a basic way before you dive into the really complicated stuff. Um, don't get discouraged if you can't find information on the button there are just some buttons out there that just can't be identified. Um, so don't get bogged down by a single button. Um, just put it to the side, try again later. Um, sometimes the information hasn't been put online yet. Sometimes, sometimes the information is just lost. Some of these families were uh, just life peers. Sometimes they were not around for long. Sometimes they fell within publication dates 
and it just the button was made and then you know somebody died and it just got lost the information just may not be out there um, I try to to research as many as I can catalog them archive them restore them do what I can um, but you know don't get bogged down by one uh, don't get discouraged uh, if you're new to this hobby uh, we have quite a group going on on Facebook uh, it's called livery buttons and badges you just search that you'll find us um, we've got about 100 150 people that um, at least are interested in the hobby which is saying something <laughs> considering a year ago it was completely at least from my end was completely solitary it was completely kind of a lonely thing so it's kind of kind of gone a little bit further than I had expected in a social way um, which is great um, I, we are very active in that group so I really really thank those guys and, and women for being out there and and kind of taking my my nerdy little hobby and making it more social <laughs> so I hope this video finds you well I hope you enjoyed the mail call um, thank you for liking subscribing doing whatever buttons you push um, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.